Okay, so in the last episode, I was doing some testing on some of the Chinese group sets that I've had through my garage. And I also discussed a reported breaking issue with the new machine QED group set. Essentially, a guy in China using the group set lost braking on a descent, crashed, and then he broke his leg. Now, since then, Majin has been in contact. We've had a bit of back and forth, and I've got a pretty big update I can share with you. Now, this is a group set from, from L2, not, not Majin, but as a quick refresher, it was speculated that potentially the actual oil reservoir in inside the shifter on the QED group set wasn't quite big enough. So basically, once the guy's brake pads had worn down to about a third of their original width, the pistons inside the caliper couldn't extend out any further, causing a loss of braking and a crash. If true, that is a pretty massive design flaw, right? But throughout this, Machine have stayed adamant that it's not an issue with the product. So today, I'm gonna to go through the tests they've done to kind of show this. I'll give my own thoughts at the end, and I'll also link the full testing and investigation report that I got down in the description for you in case you're interested. Firstly, they took a look at the guy's bike. Apparently no modifications to the original group set and importantly, no sign of any oil leakage around the caliper because I know some of you speculated that potentially the hydraulic seals around the pistons inside the brake caliper may have failed, but according to Machine, not the case. Now, they do claim that the brake pads were worn beyond permissible limits. He was running the pads that came included with the group set. These are actually the ones involved in the crash. And you can see the wear indicator is exposed here. Presumably when this is present, the brakes squeal a bit more, pr prompting you to kind of replace them, right? But as we discussed in the last episode, even with brake pads in this condition, you should still be able to brake, which at the time he couldn't. So to test for this problem, Machine took those worn brake pads and put them into a seemingly identical QED group set that they'd set up and bled themselves. They also used the same front wheel and disc rotor that the guy was using at the time uh, during the crash. Now go and read the full report for all of the details. And they've also linked a, a full test video that they took during the investigation at the bottom. But long story short, the braking seemed fine uh, and they were able to stop. The two main conclusions from Machine are as follows. Number one, the brake pads had reached critical wear levels and needed replacing. And number two, the group set contained less brake fluid than required by specifications. So according to Machine, it looks like the group set may not have been set up and bled properly. Now, it's worth pointing out, the group set that they used in their testing seems to be bled as normal. It doesn't look like they bled it specifically with the worn brake pads in mind to ensure it kind of passed the test. So that seems to be above board. But after reading the report in full, I did have follow-up questions. Firstly, do you need any kind of specialist tools or equipment to set up the group set properly? Because my first thought was um, maybe it's just really difficult for the average person to set up and bleed without kind of specialist or proprietary equipment, but apparently not. You can use pretty standard kit. I'm told that the only catch is that depending on the type of bleed funnel, you've got these threads at the bottom here, they might not be long enough. So presumably the actual bleed port inside the shifter is a little bit recessed. So you might need something a little bit like this. So a bleed funnel with a little extension nozzle on the bottom. In fact, you might have seen me use a setup like this to bleed quite a lot of the different Chinese hydraulic group sets that I've had through my garage. And it's worth saying as well, the threading on the actual bleed port inside uh, these Chinese group sets is often not exactly the same as the Shimano standard. So this cheap bleed kit that I picked, well, I picked it up on Amazon for like 20 quid a couple years ago. It's got extension nozzles, couple of syringes, and it's, well, importantly, it's got a lot of these different adapters that you can fit on the end to fit all different types of threading. So pick up one of those, you should be fine. That doesn't automatically make it an easy bleed. There could well be a kind of specific technique you need to employ to, yeah, make sure you get all the bubbles out of the system. So bear that in mind. Question number two, why wasn't the original group set involved in the crash used for testing? Well, interestingly, Machine said the guy involved in the crash just chose not to let them use it. So it was kind of sealed up and sent back to him, which was an, entirely his choice, allegedly. But they, they've assured me the group set they did use was identical to the one that he had. And lastly, according to the guy that crashed, both brakes failed during the incident, which is a little odd, right? Because both systems are completely separate. So for both brakes to fail at exactly the same time does seem unlikely, right? Now, I did actually press Machine on this, but they didn't really provide any comment. I would guess they don't want to speculate without any basis, which is, is fair enough. I guess that they're, they're being cautious, right? But I'm not bound 
bound by, by those rules. So here's what I think could have happened. On a road bike, or in this case, a gravel bike, especially on steep downhill sections, about 80% of the braking is done with the front wheel. So I can imagine a scenario where, for whatever reason, the rear brake has failed a few miles or maybe even the ride before the crash, right? And because, like I said, most of the braking is done on the front, you might not necessarily realize straight away. Then when the front brake fails and you crash, you test both and realize you've got nothing. Now, I'm not saying that's exactly what happened, but given the scenario, I think that could be plausible. Now, one more thing worth mentioning, after a little bit of fishing for <laughs> information on my part, it turns out Machine have also tested the QED group set in the same way that I did in the last episode. So basically, they, they took a set of brake pads, knocked all the pad material off like this on both sides, down to the backing plate. And from the evidence they showed me after a normal brake bleed, they were still able to brake fine. So I've seen it, but unfortunately, Machine won't allow me to share video of that test with you. From what they said, they don't want to be seen actively promoting that sort of use case because it is so outside of normal parameters. I mean, any group set, regardless of manufacturer, should not be used in that way. It is obscenely dangerous. So yeah, I understand their position, but I can report, at least from what they've shown me, it does seem to pass that test. So yeah, there we go. Machine are adamant it's not a problem with the group set. And after reviewing all the evidence and looking over the incident files, I'm kind of inclined to believe it, honestly. But still, I'd love to test it myself to be absolutely sure. But Machine won't send me one. I asked a couple of times, but they declined saying, once it's made available outside of China, then they'll send me one of the group sets to review. I've really tried to get my hands on one. There is seemingly none in the UK. I've looked on AliExpress, nothing there. There is one for sale in Japan for on eBay for like 800 quid, but I can't. I can't justify spending that. So unfortunately, I still can't test it on camera. So it's difficult for me to be 100% certain that there's no problem. However, despite not sending me one of these group sets, I, I do, I've got to give machines some credit here. They appear to have taken this pretty seriously. They chatted with me, answered my questions, and they even spun up an English version of the accident report and made it publicly available for, for me to share with you. On that note, do go ahead and check the materials if you're interested and feel free to make up your own mind. Anyway, do let me know what you reckon in the comments down below. I'll be completely honest. It has been a bit stressful diving into this topic, but I think it's important to put companies under a bit of pressure when it comes to, to questions around critical safety stuff like this. So yeah, more than happy to do it. I think it's, yeah, I do think it's important. Anyway, yeah, enough of that. Thank you for listening and yeah, see you next time.